Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. You hear me, apparently. Okay, um, Monty Python would say, and now for something completely different. Uh, we, um, we were in the grid uh, with the la uh, last presentation. We will be mostly in the home, in your home maybe, um, uh, for the next 15 minutes. So I am Joost Tumrest, I'm CTO at, at KNX. And uh, the first thing I want to uh, tell you about is of course, what is KNX? Right, okay. So on the agenda is a brief introduction to, uh, to KNX. I will not uh, make you do sports like the previous presentation, uh, pre presenter, uh, so I will not ask you to stand up who knows KNX and who doesn't. Uh, I don't want any bleak results. Uh. Um, so the, the next thing is energy management. Uh. So on this conference we talk about it a lot. Uh. What is it? And where uh, does it play a role? Then uh, energy management. Can KNX do this? Uh, uh, Obama would say, yes, we can. Uh, and several uh, energy management applications have or are already available today with KNX in the home. Uh, I will um, um, explain you the concept between the EN50491-12-2, that's a mouthful, uh, uh, but um, this is a very important uh, standard when it comes to uh, energy management in the home and which has been designed uh, with the help of uh, colleagues from TNO uh, and also other associations and has been uh, set up by Sanlec TC205 and now is not a PR EN anymore, it's really a published standard. So I will explain the ph philosophy behind that standard and uh, I will explain what kind of energy functions you can uh, realize uh, on the basis of this standard. And I will also explain you how we decided in KNX uh, for our members to provide uh, specifications to be able to realize that also with KNX. Okay, so uh, what, what is KNX? Uh, KNX is um, active since uh, more than three decades in home and building automation. Uh, so it is a, 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 a standard, it's an industrial standard which has been designed by many known brands like Siemens, ABB, Hager, etc. But which also includes many small companies. So uh, currently we have 500 manufacturers uh, in, in the club. Uh, what we also have is we have a training concept. So uh, anybody who wants to uh, install uh, KNX in a home or a building, he can get himself trained in, uh, in, in, in a training center of his choice, in the country of his choice, um, and he can get himself trained via a standard uh, uh, KNX course. Uh, we have at this moment in time more than 100,000 so-called KNX partners worldwide. These are people who took the effort of training themselves to acquaint them with, uh, with uh, uh, KNX. Um, what we also uh, value a lot is uh, interoperability. It's a term which is often used, but uh, KNX has put a great emphasis on ensuring that a product from manufacturer A and a product from manufacturer B can really work together. And not because the manufacturer declared that it worked together, but because a third party has tested uh, this to be the case. Uh, so a product, a dimming actuator from Siemens, can work uh, with a push button from ABB or uh, whatever. So uh, what is KNX's track record? Uh, uh, KNX has been designed back in the 90s. Uh, in, uh, back in 2000, we finished our first uh, private standard and we took that to Senelec. Senelec is the uh, European Standardization Organization for uh, Electrotechnical Material and we were standardized uh, back in 2003 already as an EN standard. We took also the standard to uh, the States. It was also uh, converted into an ANSI ASHRAE standard 
And in 2006, we became a worldwide standard. Uh, so meaning, if you want to make a product KNX compatible, uh, as a non-member, you can buy the standard and even implement KNX without being a member in, in KNX. In 2013, we became Chinese standard, so there's a Chinese translation even of this uh, specification, should you be interested in reading it. Uh, and uh, we also took the, the, the standard down under, where it became a, a, um, a, a local specification as well. And we also extended the standard also with security mechanisms in the, in the last years, because security, of course, is also an issue in uh, homes. So um, energy man management, uh, what is it? Uh, um, of course, I cannot, uh, uh, I have to turn here. And uh, if you read that uh, from what Wikipedia says, it's very interesting. Energy management includes planning and operation of energy production and energy consumption units, as well as energy distribution and storage. Objective, object, objectives are resource conservation, climate protection and cost savings. That's what Wiki says about energy management. Okay, the next thing is, has uh, KNX been doing any of that in the home? Well, the answer is I already uh, said that, uh, yes. Uh, since day one, the focus has been in, in KNX on energy efficiency and also to some extent on energy management in the home uh, and especially also in buildings. Uh, for instance, uh, heating production, uh, uh, products for that uh, to control heating production ha have been around uh, since many years. Uh, one of uh, the other um, sources of energy consumption is of course air conditioning and heat pumps also that can be uh, controlled uh, via KNX. Uh, one of the main applications since day one is individual room control so the room as such is heated to the uh, user uh, settings and not centrally uh, managed uh. The production can be centrally uh, managed, but the energy consumption is uh, at the level of the room. Uh, there are many products from our members also that allow you to transport metering data towards KNX and use this as a way of actually monitoring your consumption and finding sources of high energy consumption. Um, Already in the 90s, actually this product no longer is in the portfolio of the uh, respective member, but I, I uh, included it in uh, the slides still, because already in the 90s there were members that also uh, offered products uh, to uh, do load management in the building or the home. And uh, this product, uh, uh, actually the products are just an example of possible products, there are many other brands that offer similar products. But this particular product below is a product that even allows you to, to do sub-metering at the level of a circuit. So uh, not yeah, uh, consumption in a building, not the consumption in a room, but really on a circuit you can uh, manage or you can uh, observe the energy consumption. Um, smart metering. Uh, smart, uh, the, the smart meter uh, is, of course, uh, the rollout is, is busy in many countries. Um, uh, also, KNX allows you to connect with products to uh, these uh, smart meters. Um, then, uh, of course, um, if you have uh, such, um, uh, such products as, for instance, a heat pump, uh, a conventional heat pump, such products can also be KNXified by uh, using so-called uh, uh, potential free contacts and there are uh, many products uh, that allow that. Uh, a novelty uh, since two or three years is the fact that uh, one of the main storage uh, manufacturers also offers a product that allows you to uh, view the, uh, the data uh, of this battery. It cannot yet be controlled via KNX, they are working on that, 
but at least you can uh, monitor uh, the data of the, the storage. And also, well, we uh, are back to the e-car now. Also, uh, the connection between the charging station or your charging station at your home and your home equipped with KNX can be, uh, is possible with uh, these, the, the product uh, in the uh, low end of the slide. So, I just want to point out, KNX is not a thing which is, exists on paper. Um, uh, it has been around for quite some time and it has been doing energy uh, efficiency uh, um, uh, products and, and, and energy management for quite some time already. Um, so how is this uh, typically done? Uh, so either it's at the device level, the energy management, <coughs> like the uh, energy actuator I just showed you, or the, uh, the data is uh, imported into a visualization software, or in a central uh, panel, or in dedicated products uh, that uh, 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 centrally collect the data, and then uh, on the basis of this data, you can also uh, again control your installation. I now want to jump to, uh, to the future. Uh, so the EN 5491-12-2 is a new standard. Uh, it's brand new. It's uh, published a couple of months now. And the idea behind uh, this standard is that on the one hand, you have a customer energy manager, so a central intelligence in a home or a building, and you have several so-called resource managers. Resource managers are a sort of an abstraction of a product. This could be a single product. This could be a collection of products, or this could be an entire home automation system. Uh, it wants to abstract uh, the product or the collection of products towards its consumption of energy or its production of energy. So, uh, very important to know is that this S2 interface, as it is called, uh, so the exchange between the customer energy manager and the resource manager, is protocol independent. Uh, so, uh, I'm not now making a sales pitch for KNX uh, uh, as regards S2, because S2 can be done with any protocol around, which is, there are protocols galore in, uh, in home automation, uh, KNX is one of them, uh, but you could realize this S2 with any protocol you like. Uh, uh, the group has decided to concentrate on describing the application and the needed uh, data that needs to be exchanged between the customer energy uh, uh, manager and the resource manager. Um, I pointed out uh, behind the resource manager there could be an entire system. Uh, this entire system is um, um, depicted here with the acronym HBS, Home and Building Electronic Systems. So it could be an entire home automation system that sits behind one single resource manager uh, in the home. But also a charging station, for instance, could, be, uh, could have a resource manager uh, to, uh, uh, to be able to control its energy uh, consumption. So, um, the EN5491-12-2 uh, and the 12-X actually, the architecture foresees a number of control types. And these control types have been standardized to be able to, uh, to, be, uh, to, be able to um, um, manage different types of devices. Uh, so the first type is the so-called power envelope based control. That's to impose a sort of a speed limit on a device. Uh, you may not produce or you may not consume more than this, please, in, the, in, in time. The power profile based control is about, um, uh, uh, is ideal for devices that describe their power consumption or supply in phases, for instance, uh, wide good appliances. The third one, the operation mode based control, is typical or can be used for devices that have different states. 
The fourth one, the fill rate based control is uh, ideally uh, suitable for, for, in, for instance, energy storages. And the last one, the demand driven based control is ideal for devices that can produce energy via multiple sources. Uh, my colleague, uh, Mr. Runge, will give you more information about this in, uh, in his presentation, because I see that I have already consumed up all my time. Um, next time I must really uh, uh, cool down on the number of slides. Uh, I will round off with uh, uh, the following statement. For this standard, uh, KNX has also for its members making, uh, has made a uh, a description, a specification on how these control types could be realized with KNX. And for that we have made a number of uh, um, um, yeah, additions to the KNX standard. And one of these uh, additions of the KNX standard is the KNX IoT specifications. Uh, this allows to do web service based control of KNX installations and also allows to make a fully IPv6 based KNX installation. Okay, I think that's it. Unfortunately, 15 minutes is quite short. Okay. <laughs>